I wrote up, now of course I need to find it, um, just basic like um, where we agree, where we don't agree, and then potential um, potential remedies to meet in the middle. Um, and sorry, I just went and I'm going to give it up. Um, but I think we agree that um, some sort of OCI package type in Perl makes sense. Is that fair? Yeah. It, is this doc shared somewhere that I'm missing? Oh, no. I can share my screen. Oh, that would um, work. OK. Let me... I, yeah. I think that it makes sense to have some type of OCI Perl thing. Uh, exactly what that means, I think, is where we diverge. Yes. And I think um, the biggest, so the two biggest things where you would like to see some sort of modification is the name with artifacts in it, and then how we describe like this type property. Yeah, right, I mean, those, those are... It. Those are very tightly coupled things, right? Uh, like, I'm fine with the artifact name if it's really well defined to be specific to like OCI artifacts. But mm -hmm. as a, if it's meant to be a generic way to reference content in a registry, then I think artifacts is re either redundant or just misleading. Okay, and I, I mean, I think OCI. I can be agreeable to OCI as the name for general content if that works for everybody else. Um, I think definitely want to have OCI in there. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think for me, I'm just, I, part of it, I, I think we keep on dealing with this underlying tension of why there's such a difference in an OCI artifact isn't the generic thing for all things in a registry, not just container images. And I, I, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not on a phone, on a video yet because I'm still driving back. I'll be back on the computer in a minute. But I, I wonder if that is part of what's creating a lot of the issues that we try to follow up with, whether it's the artifact type or the media type or whatever. So can you elaborate a little bit, John? What is it that you think is so different? Yeah, so I mean, the the result of the OCI artifacts stuff is uh, just not applicable to all things that are referenceable in a registry. Like, it is a specific guidance for uh, basically setting a string inside an OCI image to mean something. And that doesn't broadly work because of how an OCI image index works, right? It doesn't have this config media type string. Um, like if OCI artifacts was, you know, here's so here's how you store stuff in a registry. Here's an annotation that indicates like, oh, it is this other type of thing. Um, then that would work for both an index and an image. But because it only works for an image that happens to have a string inside of it set in a particular way, it doesn't make sense to me to say anything that you can reference in a registry is an artifact because you can't reference an uh, index as an artifact. Yeah, it's a subset. Because it has no config descriptor, right? Right. So, so you can't it, use that. Yeah, I mean, it's I think a problem with how OCI artifacts were defined. Yeah, it's both a subset and it also doesn't include I think ninety five percent of what we actually want to reference today. Maybe tomorrow we'll want to reference some other stuff, but today most everything are container images and they're not defined as an OCI artifact. So I'm sorry, I, I walked out of the car in the rain to the house. So I missed part of this. So I hope that you guys can hear me now. Um, I think we're getting caught up in, all right. I, I don't know how to do this in a way that we don't wind up making this the artifact conversation. And it's almost like that's what we're gonna try to deal with tomorrow, but we're getting caught up, I think, in my opinion, of how we had to implement a generic way to reference everything in a registry today 
versus what we're trying to accomplish. In other words, the mechanics of how we accomplish this are one thing as opposed to the concept of what we've been working to enable. The mechanics of using the media type was how do we represent this without making changes? The concept is still the same that we store all these things in registries. Some, a lot of them are container images. I wouldn't say, you know, there's certainly a lot of things that are stored in registries that are not container images. Um, so, so I will say that um, Perl currently has Docker in it and Docker is what Cyclone DX is using to refer to container images in general. Uh, so there is, I, I don't know how y'all feel about that situation. Uh, how well, is OCI different from Docker as far as like Perl is concerned? I think Wait. Docker is going to be pointing to that 95% of things people pull in a day, they're container images. And so we're trying to make this a little bit more generic, but at the same time, we need to be careful that I don't think we're making it more generic. We're making it specific to that other 5%. And we need to find that way we create a solution that is generic to everything. At the same time, I'm, I kind of rose my hand because I want to, my impression we're going through and saying, let's make this thing an OCI thing. I really want to make sure we pick something that is currently an OCI. And, and I think that might be part of the, of the stress going on in this conversation is that we're pulling stuff in that is proposed to go into OCI in the future, but isn't there yet. And so my own goal would say, let's leave whatever we do open that we can extend in the future if we want to add some other stuff in there. But as we're defining what Perl is today, let's define it with what OCI is today and not what OCI might be tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. I'm not quite sure what you're, I mean, I'm, I could guess what you're referring to, but it's like- We're, we're talking or as artifacts that aren't part of OCI today. And so- yeah. Instead but of going into that, let's still this. No, I get you. But the concept is there is distribution supports multiple manifests. Just so happens that some of them are described in the image spec. There's a concept of artifacts. We refer to the artifact type as a logical thing by using the config media type today. How that gets represented in manifest, new manifests that we're proposing or new manifests that don't yet exist is still, those are implementations of the concept that I can store different artifacts in a registry. So that's so why Steve, I say- Steve, I think uh, Brandon is actually suggesting a path forward to unify um, OCI artifacts, ORAS artifacts, whatever container images as like one thing. And uh, this, is, this is the path forward is just calling all of it OCI um, generically because in Perl, there is something called Docker already. Uh, and Docker is, at least in the Perl uh, context, it is very, very specific. It is, you know, you use Docker and Docker Hub and that's all you use. You don't use anything else. But the, uh, I also wanna keep in mind that I think our goal is to deprecate that Docker entry by proposing something that can be used instead. Yeah, so that is, it, it, it's a long-term path. So yeah. currently, um, you know, Docker is there because that's all they know. And OCI is not quite there to a point where you can say that, you know, OCI means anything that is like, falls under the auspices of the open container initiative, whether that be, you know, whatever we're experimenting it in or whatever is stable, uh, it doesn't matter. But um, eventually, I think our goal should be that the Docker pearl should be subsumed into OCI. Yeah, and in terms of that path forward, because I know Steve's concern is I'm working on those Aura stuff, I wanna make sure that there is something there. And I'm not saying we don't do that, you know, keep working on it, keep, keep making progress on that side of it. 
make sure there is a point that we can get to when that finally gets pulled into OCI, assuming it does, where we can say, okay, this is how this would be represented in the Perl in the future. But as we define the Perl today, we define it with what OCI is today. And we just say, okay, here's how we can potentially expand this in the future. But right now we're defining this, we're defining an OCI artifact, we're defining an OCI image and index. And we just work with what's an OCI today and just knowing there are other things that might come in the future. I, I think, again, we're just getting tied up into some details that are not as relevant to the, the mechanics of what we're talking about, because what there's the concept that you can store different things in a registry can be implemented different ways. We currently do that with the image spec. We haven't done it with index yet because it turned that index didn't really support what we needed. Um, that doesn't mean you can't have an index, but an index will today will be a collection of container images. So they're still covered as part of a type. So um, uh, one thing I will point out, Steve, real quick, is that Perl does not understand any of this stuff. So Perl, the, the, right now, the way that we've submitted the proposal is there is no indication of what kind of thing it is. All it's saying is that it's an artifact and it has a digest. That's, that's it. In fact, uh, currently the discussion is circling around, well, if, if, it, if there is no repository URL, then how, how would this work? But um, at least at the generic point, um, the, at, uh, the concept doesn't have to do with how these things are managed. It's more about uh, how do we how do we actually identify that this thing is a, you know, a, a thing that is understood by OCI? Yeah, whether I, it's I just, whether it's artifacts or containers or whatever. I mean, a file that you put in a registry. I I don't think that should be something that blocks. I don't think mechanisms should be something that blocks adopting a common term. I guess I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what it is we're, we're disagreeing on. So the, the mechanics of what we're trying to achieve is, and maybe we're just gonna go back to this. This is part of the, the, the goal. We have, you're, you're building the Debian image. You're gonna host the Debian image on multiple registries. It's gonna be on Docker Hub, it's gonna be on ECR public, could be on GCR, could be a GHCR. Maybe there's an ACR public. I'm not committing one way. I'm just saying the point is, is there's lots of destinations. When you build that Debian image, you're going to build the SBOM for it. That's part of the goal, right? So I build an SBOM and then I sign them all. I'm not getting into details what, which technology you sign it with. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that you're going to build these things and we need an identifier that says this SBOM points to this Debian image, this very, very specific one with the digest. So now when it gets published on four or five or six different registries and four or five different companies bring it into their environment and then they promote it to their dev and their staging and their production environment, that whether the SBOM and the uh, container image stay together, which is what we're proposing with the artifact spec, or they stay separate because somebody stores SBOMs in some other service of some type, we want to be able to say that this SBOM, when they crack it open and they see what is this SBOM pointing at, that there's a piece of information in there that can absolutely positively, no question about it, say this, that you don't have to find the Debian image per se, because the assumption is they've already found the Debian image. The question is when they do a double check to say, does this SBOM actually point to this Debian image, there is Debian and um, a digest that can link. And as long as those match, we're in great shape. At the end of the day, that's really all that has to be in that Perl, like full stop. So, the other uh, information we're talking about is the ability to have hints, some kind of information that's helpful. Because you could argue even the Debian name doesn't help, doesn't matter, but we do want to have some information that says, all right, here's the registry, here is the you know, because a, a you don't want to search an entire registry for um, a digest. You want to scope it to a repo. So if I have that repo name, I can find it. And that's what we're trying to link. The fact that there is a hint that says 
First of all, we've been arguing whether there should actually be a registry in there, but that's it. I don't want to be careful before we go down that conversation too far. And it's it seems like it would be helpful to say this is a container image versus a Helm chart versus a WASM. If we, because it just it seems helpful to for troubleshooting that I'm looking at this Perl. Computer's not going to do anything with the Perl. And quite frankly, the computer, the, the computer code doesn't care whether it's an index or even an image. In fact, I'd argue that an SBOM shouldn't actually point to an index because an index is a is deflection to different architectures. And you don't, I can't imagine having an SBOM for a multi-architecture platform. It would eventually point to this is the SBOM for Linux, this is the SBOM for ARM and whatever. I think if we boil it down to those pieces, then we're we're talking a little bit more narrowly of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, if, okay, uh, I think I'll let Brandon talk and then I'll raise my hand and I'll. I, I was putting mine up because I know you wanted to talk and I was going to give you a chance. But um, Steve, you, you said there real quick that the computers aren't going to be reading the Perl. And I, I wanted to really dig into that because that's kind of my biggest no, concern sorry, is. Didn't, let me rephrase. The computers are only interested in the digest and the um, the repo name. The other so, stuff we've been talking about isn't used to resolve, like there, the fact that it says it's a container image versus a Helm chart versus a WASM is irrelevant for the linkage. It's really a troubleshooting piece of data. Yeah, because my biggest concern and the thing that I'd put up in the GitHub issue was I'm trying to understand how a computer could generate those fields and parse those fields if they've been generated. And so that's kind of what I wanted to work out and understand with what we're doing here before we said, okay, let's do it. I want to understand what we are actually doing. So if it's never going to be parsed back here, okay, I guess that's not a big issue anymore. Um, well, I don't know if we can but, say it's never going to be parsed by a computer. Yeah. And so assuming well, it is, I'm, that's kind of the biggest thing I wanted to try to get out of this was how can I generate these fields? Is it just the string helm? Is it a type field in there? Is it, where is it coming from? How is that field being generated specifically? I'm, I'm trying to okay. get to some of those details. And that's why I was trying to get to the very specifics of the, it, at the end of the day, the way you definitively know these things are linked is the digest and probably the repo would be needed. The registry is a runtime configuration that gets passed in that says, look, this is where all this content is now. That's great, but if when some when a, when a piece of code is validating, is this SBOM really for this container image? It's the manifest digest that's we're saying that that's the definitive linking. Everything beyond that is not code, not stuff you would use in code to do anything with. It's really a matter of like if the fact that we want to say it's a Helm chart versus a container image versus a WASM is really just helpful information to a human. I don't see how code would do anything with it. And then it's just a matter of, well, if we're gonna say it's a Helm or a WASM or something else, then do we have to reinvent a short name for those? Or do we use the, the this is where I refer to it as artifact types. The artifact type is persisted as a config.media type using the OCI image spec. I'm just trying to follow the proposal we said before is don't reinvent names. Well, and that's kind of where I'm, I'm agreeing with Rose here where I'm thinking there, there is probably gonna be some computer reading of this where you might wanna say, tell me all the Helm charts I have that I've pulled into this stuff, you know, and if everything names a Helm chart with one thing with a media type and another thing with a lowercase string, another thing, Helm space chart, that's not very possible by a computer to, you know, deduplicate all this information and keep it all sorted out. And so the more we can define what, what we specifically mean for that field and any other fields, the, I think the better our result is gonna be. Yeah, I will note that Perl does not have any way to enforce these values. So, I mean, the, a tool would have to be careful about saying like, okay, I'm going to look for only this string because um, Perl, like you can generate any Perl and it doesn't have to be like they could put, you know, anything they wanted as the type and it would still validate as a Perl. So that's just a, a cautionary um Consideration. Can I, can I back up a little here and just describe like what what we are looking for as far as the S bomb side is concerned? Um, S bombs want accurate artifact locations, and we 
really cannot provide accurate artifact locations for anything that is stored in a content addressable storage uh, that gets pointed to by a digest or a tag. And so the reason why we were looking at Perl is to figure out some pattern that would tell us um, this, this artifact is the artifact that you're looking for, the one that you asked for. Um, and optionally, we will also tell you like where we got it from and um, maybe the SBOM has more information about that. Um, Perl doesn't really, Perl is very uh, package ecosystem specific. So what that means is that they assume that there is a centralized repository with a dedicated package manager, um, very similar to what Crates is or Ruby Gems or NPM is. So the assumption is that, you know, there's already like something that's working and people are using it. Um, this OCI, isn't that kind of ecosystem. And at least now that, I, now that I'm collecting all of these like uh, tensions that are going back and forth, I get the feeling that um, we ought to, you know, collect requirements from everyone. So for example, uh, if we were to make an identifier like that, then we must have a digest. We optionally have a tag. Uh, we must be able to define a media type. Um, we optionally have like a high level type, like like WASM, yeah, yeah, WASM or DEB or something. Um, and uh, yeah, I wondered if this is something the community is interested in exploring. So the artifact, the artifact type that you're referencing would be like a content, it would describe the content of. Yeah, content description or something yeah. like that. Uh, but it needs to be a, a string that we can put uh, in an SBOM that says uh, something about where we got this, where we fetched the artifact from. Yeah, it need, well, I think it also needs- The location to is different though. I think we're talking two different things of location and type. Um, so what, what you are um, um, referring to, Steve, is that uh, if we were going to have like a string that's an identifier, it would be nice if we could parse that string and resolve it into a location. Did I understand that correctly? I, I just want to tease out the separate things because since we last talked on this call, the separation of identity and location has been another topic and I, I'm trying to keep those things separate. What I'm trying to distill down to um, is what is actually needed for this use case. And what I'm getting at is, while the manifest media type, whether it's an OCI image manifest or an OCI image index or a Docker manifest or a Docker, I forget what the other the Docker type that represent index are. If you have all of those actually aren't help, those don't add any value to what we're doing here. Um, because at the end of the day, that's part of the container ecosystem. The container ecosystem knows how to resolve manifests. At the end of the day, all we're trying to find is the unique identifier, which we're, the more we dig into this with the Perl community, this is what's nice about uh, distribution is it does have a unique identifier that does have, I think somebody did some confidence and they couldn't find any hits on, on any of the digest collisions. So it by design has a unique identifier. If we can't agree on anything else, and if, if we don't agree on artifact type, if we don't agree on what the, the URL location is, it doesn't, we still get a win. At the end of the day, as long as the Perl says this thing 
OCI star. We're going to leave that out for a second. And Debian uh, at, you know, SHA-256 for today, SHA-512 tomorrow, colon, you know, long digit, not human expected to remember. As long as you have that unique identifier, then we won because now the SBOM can be linked to the Debian image regardless of how it got there. If, so if the, the team can kind of agree to that, then we're just talking about, hey, what's some extra information that could help for troubleshooting? Yeah, no, you, you, I agree with you on that. I'm just wondering whether Perl is the right format for that because Perl expects a closed ecosystem with a centralized well, repository. Well, I think that's not something that we're going to resolve on this call. That is like a separate issue in the with the Perl. Maybe. It is. It, it, it is, but I mean, the reason that we're making an OCI-ish star Perl or whatever is the assumption that uh, Perl will allow for uh, something uh, as generic as OCI. Um, if Perl does not allow something as generic as OCI, then, you know, I, I think it, I think, we still have the opportunity to uh, find another scheme to identify these things. I don't think that's actually up to us. Like here, this is really the SPDX and Cyclone DX, excuse me, Cyclone DX communities that are choosing to use Perl. We're having a separate conversation with them both saying, look, if Perl does definitively have location in baked into the static value, that's problematic, but that's really for the SPDX and Cyclone DX community to decide. We're just saying, look, if somebody's going to use Perl, which we kind of like the idea, that here's how um, you could uniquely identify things that are in registries. By the way, things that are in registries are uniquely identifiable. Like this is the thing that we've been watching in the Perl conversation is they're somewhat justifying location because it's the only way they can get a unique value for the thing, and that's broken. Like they need to solve that. But that's not really our charter. So if we were to follow Perl and we were to include the thing that you said, which is, you know, we need to be able to uniquely identify whether this uh, artifact is a WASM or a DEB or a container or a text file, um, that makes me feel like each item that you uh, that I have described that I have listed there would have its own pearl. Uh, and this seems a little, mm, it, it, it seems a little redundant because the only difference between all of those packages is just the type of package. But Perl assumes that when you have something, uh, you have like a foo, what they assume is that foo points to some unique, closed, specific ecosystem. So it's almost like, so it's almost like if uh, you know you were to distribute WASM packages using OCI, using uh, OCI stuff and registries and all that as implementations then WASM can be a line. Uh, WASM can be an entry in Perl, but it assumes that WASM has an ecosystem uh, already built up and mature and <laughs> distributing things that way. Well, it's kind of the same thing we've done with the OCI artifact stuff is we're basically saying, look, if you're focused on your thing, just focus on your thing. You don't need to worry about, you don't have to build yet another storage service for your thing. And you don't need to create yet another WASM for your, sorry, yet another Perl for your thing. If you've defined a WASM and if you define an artifact type, which is defined in, in the OCI image as implement, implemented as a config manifest, manifest config media type, just use that same string. Like you don't even need to rethink it all. That's really what we're trying to achieve here is minimize the complexities for anybody that wants to have a thing persisted in a registry or persisted in a production reliable blah, blah, blah service. Here's one for you. Don't worry about it. And if we can do this Perl thing in a generic way, then that works as well. 
what I'm trying to find a path here is saying, look, if we're really going to argue an argue debate to the point where it's just not constructive on the artifact type being a property in it, it's actually not needed. I think it's unfortunate that we don't put it in there, but you don't need it. It's it's literally, if you want a unique identifier, the awesome thing about registries is the manifest digest is that thing. So I, I'm not gonna say I don't wanna have type in there. I just wanna have it defined and I'd like to have it defined based on what's currently in OCI. That's- So would that be media type? That would be media type on OCI artifacts, not the artifact spec stuff in ORAS. Yeah. Well, hold on. So or, I just pieced it. We, we've got type. a way to say defining OCI artifact types is in the OCI artifacts repo. It is adopted in the, you know uh, yeah. uh, by the TOB. It specifically says defining OCI artifact types. So the fact that it's manifested as a config media type was how do we use a property in one of the specs today, like the the me, the manifest and media types, the manifest type, whether it's an image or an index or a Docker manifest or a Docker index is irrelevant. That none of that stuff matters in, in this case. It matters in other cases. It doesn't matter in this case. I disagree. Um, I mean, like the TOB approved the proposal for OCA artifacts, but like as, as implemented and as I know it's an implementation detail, but I think for, if you're going to use this in a spec like Perl, I think it's important to get the details correct. The current iteration of OCI artifacts cannot satisfy the charter. It, it is just impossible. And I like I don't think that the TOB has signed off on like, yes, artifacts achieved its goals. I, I disagree with that impression. Your point is noted. It's been consistent. But that is there. There it, is there more to be done, sure. But I, I actually don't understand the point of this this campaign to to not call anything artifacts when it's a project that is approved. We're continuing to you know we're looking to make more progress on it. I don't know why we continue to have this debate of why should we not use a term that we did define, it did get merged, it did get approved. This is not like it's some sandbox project under OCI. Like we did, we did go through all these steps. I, I think it is important that the thing that was approved is different from what we have, right? Like it, it's not useful to say OCI approved this proposal uh, as a justification for using OCI artifacts in the Perl spec because the TOB didn't approve the implementation. Right. I mean, as is, it's. What do you mean? Oh, no, hold on. What do you mean by the TOB? The the spec that is proved, the link that I just put there that says defining OCI artifacts, did go through months of debate. So I I this want to spec. stop here. I want to stop the conversation. Not a productive conversation to have this. To I do the filibustering for no purpose. Okay, so now it's it's uh, going beyond, um, you know the what we started talking about, which was how do we identify these things? Um, so like I said, at least at the Perl level, they expect a mature ecosystem. And OCI in general does not, um, whatever it is, artifacts or anything, does not represent a mature ecosystem or a mature implementation where you could you know, distribute these sort of things. Maybe Based like on maybe, what? Hold on. maybe. Why do you say that's not mature? Every registry supports it. Yeah, no, you're just talking about a uh, registry. You're not talking about some, uh, you know, implementation like, for example, Docker that has all of the infrastructure ready to circulate a certain kind of package. Um, that folks are using right now. So Docker has all of that. There's a CLI that understands a certain type of package. They, um, there is a, a centralized repository. Nobody cares how they implemented that or whether they follow the OCI specification, not of any concern. All they know is that there is a CLI called Docker and everyone's using it to distribute stuff. 
And there's now, a Helm CLI, there's a WASM CLI, mm -hmm. there's a Singularity yeah. CLI. They all store yep. things in container registries yep. using OCI artifacts to be able to define what those types are. Yep. Every okay. registry supports it. Docker Hub has some work they're still out finishing up, but there's a long list of every other registry that does. Yes. So and I'm not sure why it's not mature to put it in that category. Pearl assumes that Helm charts, Helm is a CLI with a centralized repository. Singularity is a CLI with a centralized repository. Yes, each one of those is a separate kind of package which, uh, with a separate kind of ecosystem. OCI is too generic. That means it's almost like it encompasses all of these things. And in, in, in that view, asking for something that's like OCI versus OCI artifacts versus OCI uh, fancy thing. Um, it, it, it's a divergent, it's divergent from this whole like, okay, Helm chart is his own uh, ecosystem and singularity is his own ecosystem. So I personally am not able to understand why this is this insistence on OCI dash artifact versus just OCI? So let me ask you, Nisha, to clarify: Are you thinking that the better solution would be to say we're going to make a spec right now that's OCI image that would cover the ninety-five percent of the use cases today, and then add on to that an OCI Helm later on? and define that just for the Helm charts and OCI singularity, just for the singularity data. Yep. Okay. I think we really missed the whole point by doing that. The whole point is somebody doesn't have to go into the Perl spec and, and create their own. The whole idea is what we've seen in the Perl conversations is many of these other package types don't have the infrastructure that we have with distribution. So by creating and standardizing on a common way of doing it, I don't really care whether it says OCI dash artifact or not. I, like, that really isn't the, the, the hill I'm trying to die on. What I'm trying to do is say, let's have a very generic way of storing things. If, you, if, if it's OCI colon, then we already have some other places where that's used too. That's not really the, the main point. It's let's give people a standard way to store their stuff so that they don't have to worry about Helm chart museums that don't scale or Helm store some GitHub registries, GitHub uh, Git register get repos that they can't get access to or they're not replicated given the way to store all of their types in that registry implementation that we've already done the hard work of getting a Perl spec uh, specified if they want to use helm for a chart museum they could use the separate helm uh, entry if they want to leverage what's the registry implementations then they can say oci I'd like it to have a Helm in there somewhere. If we can't agree on that, because we, for some reason we don't want to agree on the word artifact, then that's not really the most important thing. So I, I personally think that Perl does not satisfy that requirement. And if there needs to be some other way of genetically defining this, uh, we have to figure that out. If uh, the community wants something like that. Shannon has his hand up too. Um, it strikes me as kind of strange that we're trying to define a generic type within the Perl spec because it's kind of counter to the whole point of Perl. They don't have a type for S3, for example, because that's more the transport and storage. It's not the package type. And the whole spec is kind of revolves around this package type. No, that's fair. There was another example. I can't remember, I can't remember if it was NPM or Debian uh, Rose. I don't know if you remember. There was another one that had a similar uh, model where you can store different types in the same service. But the reality is S3 is not a robust enough to be one of these type of services. It's a, it's a a very important critical underpinning, but that's why we have registries and package managers that are sit atop uh, storage storage APIs. But the the idea is that it's it's that you do get all of these things. That's part of it, and I I have to go back and look. I can pull up the prospect to figure out which of the other one was that had this example. But Jay has his hand up. So 
I wanted to kind of like uh, be back on what Canon was saying. Docker manifests or Docker images are, are referenced as backward compatibility in OCI or as a subset in some way. Uh, do, are you planning to collapse this? Because if you say it's OCI, Docker images are, at least the Docker manifest is not supposed to be in OCI. Uh, how, how do you think about it from the Perl side? Where do you want it to be? So there is already a Docker uh, entry into Perl. And this is kind of why um, I would prefer if we had a, a unique uh, OCI dash something for each of the uh, each of the packages that OCI supports, or Thank in you. that OCI artifacts support. So um, I don't think those would clash with Docker itself. I think what Sanjay is getting at is we've got the Docker manifest type for the schema two version, potentially other ones. We've got the OCI manifest type. Both of those can refer to images that Docker can run or any other container runtime can run. They're very interrelated. So, do we keep them separate or do we try to push everybody over to the OCI image, even though so, they are probably talking about a Docker image? Perl doesn't really care what the implementation is, whether it follows a specification or not, they don't care. Uh, they are just concerned with uh, what colloquially everyone calls these things. Yeah, I would say they're more concerned with the distribution ecosystem surrounding the package type because they want to make an inference about where you can find these things based on, you know, quote, known ways of retrieving them or repositories to retrieve them from. So treat that more as a transport level kind of concept and we'll just collapse those two into the same thing. Uh, that could be that could be one way you could collapse them into the same thing, <laughs> but um, then again, I don't. Um, there would be a lot of pushback from them because they are already using Docker. I don't know if they really care, as opposed to there is one entry there. I think it's a matter of what what direct people forward because the Docker one is problematic because of the location one location as well. So. I think the idea is that we can give a better answer so that customers start to get location independence for uh, identity. Okay, so, right. uh, one thing, oh, sorry, Rose, for uh, interrupting. Oh, right. I do want to say that there's another, um, maybe some way that you can tweak this explanation rather than uh, call it a package type think about it as a transport type and it doesn't it it doesn't matter if in all of these cases docker included it doesn't matter what the package type is the transport type seems to always adhere to uh, oci's specification um, and that might be another way of thinking about this Okay, so this, I feel like the proposal kind of took a turn. So are we thinking now that we want to have OCI dash image as a separate entry from OCI dash WASM, OCI dash, I mean, and, and if that is the proposal, then like, what do we do about things like signatures? Because there's not OCI dash signature, like what is that type of I mean, what do we do for these things that are distributed um, that can be stored in registries but don't have like a specific ecosystem or uh, CLI tool or package manager? Can we track it once they finally get some traction behind it? I actually don't think it needs a problem. I, mean, I think if you look at what Perl is trying to, to do, it's like, well, it, it, I think it's not so much what Perl's trying to do, but how we're trying to use it in the SBOM case. So I wouldn't have an SBOM on a, on a signature. I wouldn't have an SBOM on, probably I wouldn't, wouldn't have. Couldn't you put a signature in an SBOM? I would put a signature on an SBOM, yes. So that's how I know that somebody didn't tamper with the SBOM. But the, the point, if we're 
taking it from the point of the S-bombs, the S-bombs don't know they're signed. The S-bombs know they're pointing at things. The S-bombs point at container images, they point at helm charts, they point at WASMs. They could theory point to another S-bomb because S-bombs could hang off other S-bombs. Um, but things that hang off those signatures, um, scan results are like, actually I would say a scan result is another way to use a Perl too, because a scan result should say, well, what does this scan, if I'm putting a scan result in a registry, which is one of the scenarios, then what is the unique identifier inside of it? So it'd be nice if Perl can separate location from identity that we could use Perl for that as well. So um, it, the thing that's unfortunate about if we go down this path then, because this group isn't gonna register OCI WASM, like we're leaving it to them. So now in addition to the WASM group having to possibly register their IANA media type, which is what we would, would require to recognize them as a unique type, which is part of the location piece that's coming into artifacts, uh, sorry, localization strings. Um, we're also saying, hey, anybody who wants to use the artifact stuff, you have to go and implement Perl, a Perl spec as well to uniquely identify it. Like, well, why do I do that? Can I just leverage what's already there? Actually you could, but we can't agree to what that is. So I, that's why I think is if it's literally just the repo and the digest, and we avoid all these other conversations about types and we just call it OCI colon, I, I think we can be done. Go ahead, Tannen. So I've been rereading through that other thread on Perl of reasons for GitHub, Bitbucket, and generic types. And it, so I think, Focusing on WASM is interesting, but maybe less useful today than focusing on something that already exists in Perl. Like for example, Debian packages. Inevitably, someone is going to store Debian packages in an OCI repository. In fact, Akihiro already has. And that's really clever and interesting. And I would love to see more of that. I think the Perl community would prefer to see that underneath the deb package type somehow with some way to specify that it comes from an OCI repository because the OCI repository is not the package type, it's the storage location. It's where it where it's at. It's That's why I was trying to make the corollary earlier to S3 because S3, WebDAV, HTTP are all transport mechanisms, not package types. And OCI is more similar to those than it is to a Debian package. No, that makes perfect sense. And you know, we're also converging Debian on the OCI stuff as well. The, I think the, what you're making is a good point. What's interesting though, is the way it, it, where the location conversation comes in. So while you could say that, yeah, it should just go onto the Deb, um, the idea is the way you find things when you would put in a location to Debian, um, I don't know if they would find it by repo and digest under the, the typical Debian package manager, as opposed to here's how you could find it under an OCI location, you know, an OCI distribution. Um, so I, if you would think about it, like, like Debian and Helm, actually Helm isn't in here, um, but let's just say Helm was in here. Yeah, because Helm, it's just listed as a potential, um, other candidates. If there was an entry for Helm, like there is for Docker, what I would think is those are, like the Docker one's overloaded because we are talking about supersetting that. The Deb one would be, if you're looking at Deb in a typical Debian package manager, then use the Deb. If you're using for Debian that now you can benefit from, you know, the, the OCI protocol, then use this Perl to reference it. Maybe that's not the best way to do it because what we're trying to say is, look, you got a Debian package. It doesn't really matter whether you got a Debian package manager or via OCI. So th that is an interesting, for the ones that are currently there, what should be done is an interesting challenge. So what I'm trying to understand on the location is, do you need to know where you can go get it and pull it yourself? Or are you just trying to uniquely identify it so that you can disambiguate it from other installs and know that it has been installed there. Because if you don't need to know where you can go get it, that kind of removes a lot of the concerns on locations and specifying that location is an OCI versus the Debian repo or something like that. 
Pearl wants to know location. Yeah, location is 50% of the Pearl spec. It's their whole charter is to identify and locate. That's the root of this other conversation we've been having it is if they really insist, and I'm not saying they shouldn't, like a well-defined spec that says this is exactly what you do is a fair scope. And this, what, so this, the whole reason I opened up that other PR was if it is an and, then SPDX and SBOM and pretty much every other package type probably shouldn't use Perl because the, a, mature, a mature ecosystem allows the package to be moved or promoted into another environment. And when it is promoted, you need to figure out that static value of location is no longer valid. So rather than just say the Perl community should just be defunct because it, it always an and, is there a way for it to adopt uh, an, an or? or is not really the best example, but is identity the first and foremost thing and location is either a hint or it's a runtime value. And if, and if they don't want to separate those, then, then the question is what Nisha's point was, then the SPDX and, and uh, uh, SPDX and Cyclone DX folks probably need to reconsider and think of something else that they should use for identifying something uniquely. So SPDX 3.0 has already, um, they've already had consensus that they're going to use uh, IRI for identity. Um, in SPDX, location is either um, a, a, U, a URL, a Perl, or nothing, or no assertion, meaning like you don't want to tell or you don't know. Um, Cyclone DX, however, um, insists on knowing exactly where the uh, where the artifact came from, and that's why they use pearls in order to basically describe something that is fetched by some kind of uh, package manager. So as far as like the as far as the world of S bombs are concerned, uh, identity is pretty much not uh, not a problem. Like it's there's already consensus around that for either one of them. Um, it is trying to locate uh, these kinds of artifacts, like whatever uses OCI, and it's it's. Uh, it's kind of difficult in um, like in cloud native because a user who's using a client tool would not know, you know, where exactly the thing that they are fetching is located and the client tool doesn't tell them. And um, that's why, well, at, at, at least that is my concern is, you know, how do I describe this thing that I, you know, I don't know anything about, but I do know what client tool I use to get it. So is it a problem if the locations are different? Um, so like two different organizations will say, I got this from my internal yeah. repo and the other organization says, I got it from Docker Hub. Are we deduping on that field or are we gonna keep the deduping strictly on that digest? And does it really matter? I don't think it matters where it is when you're comparing if it's the same thing. That's the point of the digest. The location which we has have as the repository URL is just an optional hint in the proposal as it's written now. Should we change that to required if everybody is saying they really want that location? Well, if that's what Pearl would like to see, that's where. Well, that's what one person on Pearl would like to see. Yeah. We're trying, we're trying to find middle ground with them and saying that it's strongly recommended. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, one issue here is that you don't necessarily need the location in order to, um, in order to figure out the provenance of the artifact. Um, as, as long as, I guess as long as you have a list of attestations of the people that are involved in the 
artifact moving and the digest is consistent across that, um, there really is no need for a location uh, in that sense. But I think uh, there are um, some security reasons as to why you want that information. And that's what, at least that's what Cyclone DX is concerned with. And they're hoping that, I mean, they want Pearl to be that thing that describes, you know, where exactly you got this from. Um, and, you know, um, we're hoping that they see the other side of it, which is like, okay, if you're distributing artifacts and you're giving the digest and you're everyone along the supply chain is signing the thing, um, maybe that's not needed, but if they don't see that, then we're kind of, we're, we're not left with anything to describe um, a strongly identified artifact. So we are at the top of the hour. So um, I will say I am slightly more confused about where we want to go with this than I was when the call started. So are, do, are we thinking that we want to like scrap this and propose OCI image or um, and let other people enter their stuff? Or are we thinking that we can get to an agreement around OCI? Because I, I do see the, I mean, I think it would be to expect like people who wanna reference um, WASM, for example, or Helm charts in S bombs to expect them to come and like go through this whole procedure with Pearl, I think is, unrealistic. I don't think that is necessarily something that will be implemented, especially if they're not involved in these uh, SBOM communities like SPDX or Cyclone DX, where they're using Perl to reference it. They're going to, like, if they're working with the tool, they're going to say, okay, I want to reference this Helm chart, and there's no way to do it with Perl, so I guess I just won't create a Perl URI, URI for it. Um, that is how I see it Happening. Do we have to have someone yeah. from Helm do that, or could someone from Perl or even an outsider propose it and say this is how Helm charts should be represented in Perl, and maybe ping the Helm people and say, "Hey, are you okay with this?" But then, yeah, that... I mean, I think it's the same thing as like me being a relative outsider to OCI, have wanting to propose something like, and then like the group would need to get consensus on it, and there would probably be similar disagreements like this within that. So. Um, because personally, when I think about a Helm chart, I don't think they should really care whether it was pushed up to an OCI registry or whether it was installed from a Git repo or some other place. Mm -hmm. They no, just want to know yeah. there's a Helm chart, they're going to have their own fields. Yeah, they're going they have to, to have a unique identifier for it. And I don't know how you would do that in some of the places they're storing it today. So, but I, I do struggle with this. The intent here was never to replace what already exists. The intent was hey, you're benefiting from the, the artifacts approach in the registry, so you don't have to do all this infrastructure. You don't, the only thing you have to do is go register your unique guy on a media type. But once you've done that, party on, everything else is done for you. This was one of those examples I was hoping that they didn't have to go chase down and register a Perl for it as well. They could just take the OCI entry, put their repo and digest, I was hoping that you'd have artifact type equals exactly what they said for the IANA registration in there. So again, it's super simple. They don't need to register. They just stick it in. The, any, actually, whoever's generating an SBOM, the guidance would be, hey, if you're generating an SBOM for this artifact type, then here's the IANA register media type that you should use. Party on. No, nobody has to do any other spec PRs, communications, like all the baseline was done for them. Um, I, I do have to run, so I'm already late to another meeting. I think, Rose, to quickly answer your question, I think the common thing that most of us agree on is OCI image right now, and maybe we can iterate on that later on to add more stuff, but that would at least get us the thing that a lot of us are all in agreement that's the bare minimum that we all like. Is OCI image only representing a container? A runtime container? container? Yeah. Then why do we need to duplicate what's already there? Because you want location. 
Um, Docker, you can put location. You can specify a separate repository URL. Yeah. All we did was redefine something that's already there with no additional value. Is oh. my... Okay. I guess as most things All right. continued. Thanks, folks. Thanks for not about this, Rose. Okay. Thank Thanks. you.